Also, we do have um, social media platforms that you can follow us at. And also we do have a YouTube channel. So free for you to check us out and follow our various platforms whenever you get the chance to. And so this is a schedule for today. First, I'm gonna start with some introduction as well as public relations. Then our speaker will share on a day in the life. And then we'll afterwards we'll have a Q&A session and a brief poll. I think I believe I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Julian Bob, and I'm currently serving as the Younger Chemist Committee Chair of the Virginia Section of the American Chemical Society. And so what is the ACS? Um, it's the world's largest scientific community. Member, members have access to career, career development and networking development resources. You can be a part of member group, groups and communities, conferences and events as well as funding and awards. We also do have access to career development resources such as the chemical and engineering use, job database, career pathways workshop, ChemIDP, which is individual development plan, and even free career consulting. So the ACS does have virtual office hours every month from 12 to 1.30 p.m. And this is just a way to connect with chemists, um, professionals from both chemical industry, government, as well as academia. And just a great way to seek advice, if you need advice on interviewing, um, resume writing, and if you just want to connect. Also, if you need any advice on how to craft a LinkedIn. So it's a really good resource to take advantage of. They do have some upcoming virtual sessions. Um, the, the next one is on uh, networking, followed by graduate school, leadership and soft skills development, um, even finding and securing an internship in November, and et cetera. Um, you can also attend conferences and events such as national meetings, regional meetings, um, green chemistry um, conference. Um, as some of you may be aware, the ACS um, national meeting. The next meeting will be also this fall in Chicago. And also the Southeast Regional meeting will be also in San Juan, Puerto Rico coming in October. You can also get involved in various groups and communities such as the women chemists, senior chemists, minority affairs, and even um, younger chemists committee. This this webinar tonight is being co-sponsored by the ACS Division of Small Chemical Businesses. And it says we're all, where all the elements come together for your, for, your business, for your small business. So the vision is helping chemists combine the key elements for successful chemical enterprises. The mission is to support and educate chemists to enable them to be successful entrepreneurs and managers of chemical enterprises. And, S and the Division of Small Chemical Businesses was founded in 1978 and have at least 750 members. They do have related swags that you can um, take advantage of as well. And this is a slide that shows the leadership committee um, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the Division of Small Chemical Businesses. So you can always connect with anyone if you really interested in learning more or getting involved. Um, also, this program is being hosted by the Younger Chemists Committee and the vision is Younger Chemists Transforming the World Through Chemistry. The mission is to advocate for, develop, and support rising chemists to positively impact their careers, the ACS, and the future of chemistry. Also, uh, also the Younger Chemists is um, there's multiple groups that make up the Eastern US YCC partnership. As you can see, it's just a consortium of various local sections, um, primarily on the Eastern US that have joined forces to host and develop various programs for, for young professionals and, and students in the chemical, chemical sciences. You can see um, various participating groups, including Philadelphia, Rochester, Eastern New York, even Virginia, North Carolina, Puerto Rico, and et cetera, and even international partners such as um, one in Brazil. 
This slide shows some of the events that we've hosted in the past, such as a, last fall, a, a, a research symposium, even other programs, including self-care, other webinars, and other um, professional development sessions on how to present scientific data, developing networking skills, interview skills, and et cetera. Um, so last year, our group received two Chem Luminary Awards. So this is an award that's presented by the National ACS. And the first is Best Activity or Program Simulating Member Involvement for the Dana Live Series. We also received the Outstanding Local Section Younger Chemist Committee Award. So there are definitely ways to get involved. Um, you can attend um, YCC events at national meetings. You can even join or start your own local section, YCC. Um, you're welcome to join our committee, join our team if you're interested. And you can also apply for sponsored awards. One of the awards that, um, um, that you can apply for is called the Younger Chemist Leadership Institute Award. And this award is primarily for young professionals and just a great way to attend the ACS Leadership Institute and um, opportunity to develop leadership skills. So now next I'll introduce our speaker for today. Um, our speaker is Asia Neolani Fee. Um, Asia is a chemist and founder of Alchemist Asia. It's a science-inspired cos cosmetic company. Asia graduated from California State University with a bachelor's degree in, in chemistry. And just a reminder to, um, during the presentation, please ask um, in your questions in the chat. And also you have an opportunity uh, if you want to unmute yourself and ask questions afterwards. And I'm going to stop my slide sharing. I guess our I guess the co-host for tonight is Kimberly. So Kimberly, if you want to briefly introduce yourself. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kimberly. Uh, I'm a senior at VCU right now in chemical engineering, and I'll be here tonight helping out Julian uh, with this presentation. And it's going to be great. Very excited to be here. So take the ball, Asia. All right. Can you hear me OK? Yeah. OK, sorry. My internet was telling me that it was being unstable, so I want to make sure that it's coming through OK. Well, hello, everyone. Um, again, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm very excited about this. This has been, gosh, I think we've been planning it for a couple months in advance. So it's been a long wait, but you know, really excited for it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick with you all. Um, can we see that OK? Perfect. Yes. OK. All right. Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I want to share a little bit about my journey. So this presentation, I genuinely like start with with all my groups. So it's kind of a way to describe myself and the journey that I have had in, throughout STEM. So my journey from the lab to lip gloss and reducing science stigma and expanding the beauty industry. All righty. So as you heard from my introduction, my name is Asia Nolani Fee. I have my chemistry bachelor's uh, from California State University Channel Islands, and I've also founded my own company, Alchemist Asia. So a little background um, in regards to my education. Uh, so I am very fond of the path of going to community college. Um, it was a really scary thing just because I know a lot of people I went to high school with were going straight into university and that wasn't necessarily an option for me at the time. So I ended up going to my community college, which was one of the best things that could have happened to me. Um, I was able to get so many different scholarships and financial aid and honestly just that one-on-one -on -one attention um, with a lot of courses that I didn't think I needed help with um, was really beneficial. And I ended up leaving my college with two associate's degrees, one in natural and physical science and the other in math and science from Taft uh, College. And then I got my bachelor's in chemistry from California State University Channel Islands after I transferred uh, back in 2020. So uh, before we get into 
the craziness that is my life, I kind of wanted to start with um, where I am right now in this moment. So um, as you saw from the introduction, I kind of refer to myself as the remote chemist. And that's not only because I do a lot of stuff virtually, it's because I live in a very remote place um, in Alaska. <laughs> so that's where I'm calling you from. It's actually uh, 3 p.m. here. I know it's a lot later for you all, um, I'm sure. Uh, so something I kind of refer to myself on the side, um, I say I'm the Alaskan alchemist. Um, so I had a really huge change in my life where I moved to Alaska from California. That's where I was originally from, born and raised. Um, I now live in a somewhat remote city in Alaska. Uh, to give you perspective, uh, we have one grocery store um and i think less than three thousand people here uh so it's very small and the next city over if you wanted to drive to like another city to go to like a bigger store or to a mall is about a six hour drive so um we're pretty secluded as far as things go so when i re mean remote i mean remote uh, but also virtually and that's something we're going to chat about as well uh so i currently work as a lab technician actually for chugash alaska services and the Alaska Pipeline, which is in the oil and petroleum industry, um, which has been very interesting. So um, I kind of do a multitude of different things, but that's the current position I hold in addition to my own business. All right, so I wanna start more um, on my time in university, which I think was really a pinnacle point for me and where I really turned things around. So even in community college, um, I really wanted to get more involved and I knew I was going to pursue chemistry, but I feel like I was going about it the wrong way just because there was no support. Um, we had maybe one STEM club on campus and they met maybe like once a month. And even then, uh, the STEM club was so, so large in the fact that, you know, not by the size of the group, but we had people who were you know, chemists, people who were engineers. So it was really just like no one understood each other's majors just because if you all know um, all people in STEM, it's very diverse, you know, just in the people that are there, but also the categories and the subcategories of each uh, different major, it, it's insane. So kind of having that connection really wasn't happening in my community college. Um, it was when I got to university that I really got that connection. All right. Can you still hear me okay? Okay, awesome, thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, so to talk a little bit more about how I was involved in STEM, um, like I mentioned, I really wanted to get more involved and you know, really find um, a group or community. Um, so on the left side, you see right here, these are some of the different things I participated in. And um, one of that being a pinnacle point in my life too was, getting into research. So I started research um, my last year of university, actually, and I got to, uh, we published our work this year, which was incredible. Um, I joined this research fellow group, essentially, that I did over the summer, and I know typically research is unpaid, but I was really lucky in the sense that I got to apply to this program where three students were chosen for chemistry, and I was actually paid over the summer to do my research. So I received a stipend and which is awesome for an undergrad. Um, and a lot of that was able to fund my other expenses like keeping up with rent and bills and things like that. So that way I could focus on my research and not have to struggle financially. Um, I was also a STEM peer mentor, which was also a paid opportunity. Um, I got to co-facilitate a class, uh, which was really interesting. My uh, junior year of university, being able to teach freshman students about how to pursue courses in chemistry. So not just the chemistry work itself, I was able to help them understand what it's like to do that because there's not a lot of uh, retention or people who want to stick to their majors because once they do the prerequisites and then get into their coursework, it can be really difficult to keep them in the program. So a lot of that was to help um, make that transition easier for these students which was really interesting. And I wish I had something like that when I was in community college. Um, through that, I also had the opportunity to um, do STEM C's, be a chemistry club officer. Um, the fellowship award uh, right there was also 
in cahoots with the same uh, research award, both when I was doing that undergrad research program for the summer. And then uh, finally, like I'd mentioned, we published our research. So I was able to speak at SACNA, CSIFR, um, S, or it's called SALSA, but it's funny to be um, UCI, SCR, and um, it's not on there, but I was also at ECS. Uh, our work wasn't published yet, so I wasn't able to say that I put, like present my work there, but I was there. <laughs> All right. And I feel like now the biggest thing, which has become a huge part of my life, so from the lab to the little floss, you know, starting with you know, being on the technical side of the chemistry industry, um, that was all I knew. Like I mentioned before, going to my uh, community college, I was only aware of a small part of chemistry. It was just, you work in the lab and you work in industry or you work in academia. That's all I knew. Um, I started learning so much more when I started taking up these positions. So I kind of have here on the left side, um, a short little timeline of the work that I did and how it kind of got me into my dream job essentially. So I started as a laboratory assistant for my community, or not my community, my university. And that really got my foot in the door, you know, really hands-on. I was able to prep a lot of reagents and learn a lot more about the different industries uh, through the people I worked under. Then I worked as the STEM peer mentor. So I got to see it on the other side. So not just in the lab, I got to see it uh, from the other side. And this class was actually co-facilitated not only by me, but a professor of psychology, which was really interesting because she was super supportive and bringing in all those aspects that a lot of us in STEM don't have. Um, I know for myself, when I came in, I was just very straightforward. Um, emotions and feelings were not um, put into my efforts in my education. It was very much, I need to focus on my schoolwork, which I think had I not done this course with her, I would have not been as successful as I was, just because you need to have the other side of that as well and you know making sure your mental health is okay and understanding these relationships that you have in between you know your professors your uh, fellow students um it was a really incredible course um and then i had the awesome opportunity to actually intern for parker hannafin biofiltration in oxnard california and after working there for eight months um, as an intern doing research and development, um, I graduated. I was actually promoted to a lab technician where I got to do a lot of research projects, which was really fun. And then you can see there's a really abrupt change to where I can officially call myself a founder. And I founded my own business, Alchemist Asia, um, started some remote cosmetic chemistry work, became a speaker, um, worked in product development internships, a whole bunch of craziness, which we're going to get into because it doesn't make sense on paper as of right now. <laughs> so I want to talk more about how Alchemist Asia even came to be. So all these photos you see right here are of me. Um, I am a makeup artist. That was something I did prior to getting into chemistry. I've been interested in makeup and doing it since maybe the sixth grade. It wasn't very good, but um, you know, I grew to love it and I practiced every single day and it was a way to really express myself. Um, and when I started exploring more outlets outside of just, you know, glam makeup, I used it for educational purposes as well. So you can see that there's one where I do a DNA reference. I do one that's like robotics and engineering. And then you can see like the biohazard one as well. Um, and I always tied into, you know, my love for chemistry and science. So I, I wanted to put my own twist onto it. And I felt like this was the best way to do it because it was a media that I understood. Um, and I feel like it's not as explored too, just because, you know, there's not a lot of people who are I wouldn't say praised, but praised um, in the chemistry industry for wearing a lot of makeup, which brings me to my next point. So a little background about why I even wanted to start Alchemist Asia. Like, why would I even want to start my own makeup brand if I have plenty of brands that I use and I love and I continue using to this day? Um, some data for you. So as of 2019, women in STEM made up 13% of the U.S. workforce, of which only 7 to 9% were Black and Hispanic workers in STEM. Um, this is a huge thing because there is a huge lack of diversity in not only STEM, but the beauty industry. And that was something I noticed that really did correlate. 
Um, there was also a huge push for clean beauty, uh, which is surged through the media and market. Um, if any of you are very familiar with the makeup and skincare industry right now, that is a huge thing, you know, making sure your makeup is chemical free, making sure your skincare is clean. Um, all, these are all kind of terms that really pushed my um, interest in having chemistry be a part of the cosmetics industry just because it became a taboo and like almost a bad word. Like you couldn't mention chemicals when you're referring to skincare and makeup. And that was something that was a little strange for me because it takes so much science to make sure that these pro products are safe, effective, and fun. Um, and then again, mentioned before, uh, there's a huge lack of representation in STEM and the beauty industries. And when I saw all this correlate and come together, that's when I knew I wanted to do something and make a huge difference in these industries altogether. So we pushed this tagline, which is called reducing science stigma. And essentially what science stigma is to me um, is both in the lab and I don't know, in the at the makeup counter as well. So uh, with clean beauty on the rise, we are seeing brands shunning science as a marketing tool rather than educating their audience. The beauty industry has an enormous impact in today's society and youth. So with the vague narrative that chemicals don't belong in products, there has been a stigma associated with science in the beauty space. So like I mentioned previously, there was a lot of talk of okay, well, I wanna make sure that my, my products are chemical free. I wanna make sure they're natural and they're clean but never really understanding or explaining further. So something that's interesting to me is uh, clean beauty is a marketing term as opposed to an actual technical term. So anyone can use that and make their own definition. Just like, think of it like the Wikipedia uh, definition of anything. You can go in and change it as much as you want and it can mean something different on someone else's blog, but on, over on this blog, it means this. And that was something that I wanted to put more effort and thought into. So making a brand that was educational and transparent, but, you know, effective and fun and just making sure that the audience was involved. I think that was the biggest thing was making sure that consumers had a say and an understanding without ever feeling like I was condescending. Uh, that's a huge thing, too. So I don't want them to ever think that, oh, I can't use this product because I don't understand it or if they're trying to teach me about it, they're gonna use big words. I try to use it just like we do for research when you're presenting your work, you have to pitch to your audience and use a language that your audience knows. And that's what we try to do with our social media and our products. So you can see a few here on the right side. Um, all of them are inspired by scientific phenomenon. So we've got our test tube lip gloss, we have a rose oxide oil, our cell soap, which is inspired by an animal cell, uh, one of my personal favorites, and then um, our green wooded matcha mask. So why do we even want to diversify beauty and science? So just as we've seen in the beauty industry, STEM lacks diversity. Women and people of color make up such a small percentage of STEM jobs in the U.S. And for us, science isn't just a marketing gimmick. We are devoted to support supporting underrepresented students and breaking stereotypes of masculinity in the lab. We want our clients to be able to see themselves in both industries. And I'm a huge, huge advocate for that. So I love to wear makeup in the lab. Um, I know it is completely tabooed to a lot of places and you know, there's a lot of backlash that comes with it when um, I post on social media and people see that I'm wearing full lashes in the lab, but it is okay to be feminine in the lab, just as it is okay to, you know, maybe not want to wear makeup. And in the same in the beauty industry, maybe you are someone who identifies as female and you don't want to dress as feminine or wear feminine makeup. And I want to be able to explain that and showcase that through our brand. And I think it's a huge, important piece that we're missing in both industries. All right. So um, I think I had mentioned a little bit prior. Um, so social media is a huge part of this, not only for pushing, you know, clean beauty, but pushing our brand and putting our, our word and message out there. So uh, bringing that representation into social media was a key component into my uh, career switch. So um, a few things you're going to see here in a moment, um, social media management, content creation, collaboration, speaker events, and remote opportunities. This kind of all ties into why I even became a remote chemist and what a remote chemist even is. So um, one of the biggest things, and this was something that had caused uh, that huge change into coming up to Alaska was 
like for many of you, uh, COVID. So when the COVID outbreak had happened, there was so much that had happened on our end and everyone else's end as well. Um, but the biggest takeaway was I had lost my housing. I was potentially going to lose my lab technician job. Um, it was a really scary moment for me just because I wasn't sure where I was going to end up. And at the time, uh, we had to quarantine and stay indoors. So it was kind of a huge block for me as far as, you know, putting my science out there. I couldn't go out and do science. So what was my way of doing that? I switched to content creation. So that's where the makeup looks kind of came in, where I was doing makeup looks inspired by science, or I would do uh, science and beauty products, like things like that. So um, in the last few years, we've seen an enormous surge of STEM accounts on social media from Instagram to TikTok. Scientists are getting more creative and reaching audiences that we didn't know existed. And like, like most, I started getting creative during the pandemic to get more involved with the STEM community online. And since then, I've met incredible people and have collaborated with brands and, and featured on several podcast panels and virtual events. So um, I really got creative. I started posting more consistently and it is insane what the outcome um, became essentially. So, well, it's a little blurry, but um, just to name a few when I had first started. So these are just a, a very small list. Um, it is since then expanded. So um, I started working more on social media because it was was an outlet that I was able to use while um, I was actively home, but at the same time, I was still working in the lab trying to figure out what my next move was with COVID happening. So I was actually deemed an essential worker. And when I would go home after working 40 hours a week in the lab, I would come home and work on my social media and really push that. Even though I was making no money from it, it was just so fun and it was a way to get out there. And I started uh, chatting more with these brands and I kind of found this route where uh, remote work became in existence. Like it kind of came to be, it wasn't something that was really out in the open prior to COVID, but now it's something we were seeing a lot. You know, we'd seen hybrid positions where people would take their laptop home for maybe a day, uh, but never full-time people working remotely. And that is what I did with a few of these brands that you see here on the left side. So I have this super crazy, <laughs> um, I tried to make like a diagram and I've not been able to make one that's pretty. So this is the best one I could come up with. Uh, this is kind of my path essentially. So this was the path I took with all the stuff I was trying to do. Like I mentioned um, in community college, I really didn't know what you could do with chemistry. And I started exploring more outlets to try and figure out what I wanted to do essentially. So you can see that I started, you know, high school here, here's community college, here's my uh, university education and how so many different things that I participated in led to different opportunities for me. So even though I wanted to focus on chemistry, it led me to opportunities that tied into other things that were um, originally hobbies that I was able to turn into passions, which, you know, eventually led me to my business, but I got to do a whole bunch of stuff through social media that really pushed me to where I needed to go. So, um, as I mentioned, um, coming up to Alaska, so what had happened was after the pandemic hit, I had started my business, but I was working full-time in the lab. I really didn't know where I was going to go. So my partner actually pitched the idea of uh, going with him to Alaska, which was really spur of the moment. He was going to be going to college out there. So he had suggested if I go with him. And it was something so crazy at the time, um, but I kind of had no options. So I ended up uh, leaving my job and taking my business with me. But before I left, I wanted to make sure I had a job ready for me. So I, ex I started exploring the um, opportunity of doing more remote work. And here are a few of those that um, I explored. So this is stuff I usually recommend to people who are interested in pursuing remote opportunities that aren't just social media, but 
these are actually STEM related uh, positions that I was able to do completely online or ones that I had applied for. So uh, first one you see on there is Twitter. So just a few, as you can see below, uh, one of the coolest ones I thought uh, was a social media lead for a cancer research center in London, which was awesome. There's also people who look for freelancing uh, chemistry textbook editors. Um, there was the Johnson & Johnson internship, which was a huge deal since they were still in development of their vaccine. Um, and then, you know, podcast managers, uh, which was a science uh, podcast. Uh, the second one that was really beneficial to use was my school's forum. So um, that's something that you can really tap into, especially if your university or community college has one. Uh, typically, they have a forum where people can post from not only the community, but all over the world, where they have positions as you know, full-time or part-time for students on campus, off campus, or internships even. And that's how I was able to find some of these roles that really pushed me into um, a lot of the speaker events that I do today. So I had started doing content creation work and working with social media groups. And that's what really got me, uh, got that foot in the door. Um, really great stuff there. And I, I hope people don't ignore that because like school forums are really missed out on. They have so many cool opportunities. And then Instagram is a really huge one. Even today, um, you can find so many different roles as a social media manager, but um, that's how I got my role as an event speaker and panelist. Um, I started getting hired on to share more about my journey. And um, I got into product development where I started working on uh, co-facilitated projects in cosmetic chemistry. Um, I worked with STEM brands and became an ambassador for them. And then um, I was actually even privately contracted from different businesses to help them with their cosmetic uh, chemistry work that they needed. So if they had like a product they wanted to work on and they needed a chemist for it, they could actually hire me from all the way in Alaska to work on this product for them. And they would have this product done uh, for them to develop into the larger scale, which was really exciting to see on the back end. Um, and then the last one is ResearchGate, which I feel like a lot of people don't know about, but it's not only a great forum for you to post your research. So if you have research you wanna share more about or look for research when you're trying to work on your research papers and you need more references, it's an excellent forum to use. Um, but there's also a tab on there, just kind of like on LinkedIn, where you can explore jobs. And these were a few of the jobs that I uh, found on there that were really cool. Okay. So uh, before I end, I just wanted to, you know, tie it, everything together, essentially. Um, so I know it's kind of a crazy journey, but I feel like it needs more explanation before I can even explain what it is I do on the day to day. But I found myself taking up a lot of these things just because I was someone who, you know, in, was in this rare position where I was working where almost no chemistry jobs existed. So even though I currently work as a lab technician, uh, this was only recently. So I've been living out here for about a year now. And a year ago, there was no jobs for chemists. So uh, really using not only my knowledge in the, in the business that I had started, but also getting more into content creation really made it um, an interesting journey. And I was able to develop a career out of it. So a day to day for me, when I'm working as a lab technician, um, I work seven days straight for 12 hours in the lab. Um, and I work on a lot of um, analysis, especially on oil and petroleum. But as a business owner and a content creator and uh, someone who does social media, STEM, uh, science communication, I usually wrap that in. Um, I start my days really early and I go through my emails and I chat with different businesses. Um, in the afternoons, I like to work on different projects that I have um, and develop new uh, products too. So really it just depends um, who I'm working with on the week, uh, but it's usually pretty busy and sometimes things will cross over as well. Um, but I can go into further detail because I did notice there were a few questions. So I kind of want to leave that up to what we have available. So I'll go ahead and take a, a moment to pause. So that way, if anyone has anything they want to ask or share, um, you can do so 